We don't travel to escape the world. We travel so the world doesn't escape us. In this series, we explore the Philippines. Philippines is a Southeast Asian country in the Western Pacific. The country comprises of more than 7,000 islands, with a combined population of over 100 million people. On this trip, we felt like fearless travelers embarking on our first journey to Southeast Asia. We came very prepared. Our typical rolling luggage became 36 liter backpacks. We packed only the essentials for this trip, clothes, gear and protein bars. Get attention. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stupidest helmet ever. Our journey begins in Cebu Island. It took us 15 hours and multiple flights to get here. Let's go to the beach. Room number? 319 and 321. All right. We checked in, dropped off our bags, and were finally ready to start exploring this country. This was the furthest we've ever been from our home. Whoa. It wasn't long until we got fully submerged into the Filipino culture. This day happened to be the same day as Sinaloa, the Philippines' biggest festival. We headed down to Cebu City to soak it all in. Although Sinalog is a religious festival, it involves a lot of heavy drinking and late night partying. Navigating through the Philippines isn't easy. We use various forms of transportation to get around. Planes, buses, taxis, jeepneys, motor tricycles, mopeds, and ferries. You name it, we used it. With only two weeks in the Philippines, we had a lot of ground to cover. One of the larger islands we visited was known as Bohol. With a man-made forest, dense wildlife, and rolling hills, it's on a lot of travelers' bucket lists. A really popular tourist destination on this island is the Chocolate Hills. It's a picturesque landscape backdrop that has become wildly popular in recent years. Bohol is filled with lots of Spanish colonial churches, which has become another huge draw for tourists. Next island on the agenda was Sikihor. It's an island known for its beautiful beaches. Motorbikes are the best way to get around some of these islands. They are cheap to rent and you're able to make quick stops for pictures along the way. There's a very popular cliff here in Sikihor where travelers get peer pressured into overcoming their fear of heights. Not everyone jumps, but if you do, there's a huge crowd that actually cheers for you. After that, it was time to keep moving. Like I mentioned before, our time is limited here. Two weeks is not enough to explore everything this country has to offer. We traveled down the coastline of Cebu to a place called Oslo. This is one of the only areas in the world where you can swim with whale sharks at any time of the year.
There is something so majestic about the ocean and what lives within it. It's a whole other world. And despite their intimidating name, whale sharks are some of the friendliest giants of the sea. We were in complete awe and humbled by the opportunity to share the same water with this 60 million year old species. We can now check this one off the bucket list. That same day, we hitched a ride all the way down to the bottom of Tumalog Falls. Tumalog Falls is a natural waterfall that's still untouched by a lot of tourists. When we first saw the falls, our eyes immediately widened. Our jaws dropped and we were mesmerized by its raw beauty. The water was cold, but extremely refreshing in this Filipino heat. Before we left Cebu Island for good, there was one more thing we needed to do. As a kid, I would always seek new adventures, new ways to spike my adrenaline. And the best way to accomplish that in the Philippines was to go canyoneering. Out of everything we planned, I was looking forward to this the most. What we were about to endure was a five hour hike through the dense jungle with a tour guide that barely spoke English. But it was worth every second. We hiked, we climbed, we fell, we laughed, we did it all. It was way more intense than we ever expected. And just when you think it's over, they take you to the base of Cowesson Falls. It was easily the best massage we ever had. Canyoneering was definitely the highlight for this trip so far. In the next episode, we check into a private luxury resort in Dumaguete where we get treated like royalty. And then completely cut ourselves off from the grid in El Nido, 